I thought the way you were doing it, you asking him a question was perfect. Uh, you don't need me. Well, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. <laughs> well, can you tell us a little about your background there, Mr. Brown? Professor Brown, really? I mean, a professional technician, builder. <laughs> I mean, everything that w that we're Not able yet. to look into that in this yard. You built everything here. You haven't put me in here. <laughs> you on? It's on me. You been on? <laughs> I don't so wait scary. to get started. I tell you, I'm already in motion. Uh, <laughs> commences immediately after. Let's see, the Second World War. I came home. I need the well. And for the necessity, for, for, for the need for a well, I decided that I'd attempt to prepare a machine and drill my own. And I did craft a small machine and that utilized not a gas motor, but elect uh, an electric motor and uh, as a power source. And it was a, something that was made in, in, in the form of a tripod that I, I could uh, mount and fashioned me a winch on it, and uh, as a result, I drilled my place well. And, uh, and that's on this very uh, locality and site. Will, will you take the opportunity out to show us this that well, drill? Yeah. Please. Now, this well is here, and this well was drilled 50 mm -hmm. years ago. And as you're walking, you can see some of the machinery mm -hmm. that Mr. Brown oh. has here, tractors. Um, Well, two eight well. Well, it's at that house. At this point, and I later went back to the job, went several years, and decided I would build a, a new mag drill, a larger machine. Yeah. So I set the work on this. Now you can aim the whole camera over here. Uh, and, uh, on this thing that was never completed, but it did drill one well, and. And it's only about 20 feet from the well now, but the well has been in use now for, uh, for, for commercial. Uh, I'd say I've been been pulling water out to, to drill other wells for the, for the last six years. How long? Because I've owned two new pneumatic machines. And uh, and so that's far that drill went. But I bought two more drills, and, and if you aim your camera this way, you'll see the last one we purchased. Now that's a C, uh, CP650 pneumatic drill, Chicago pneumatic. And it's capable of drilling a whole, uh, I'd say up to about 600 feet. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm it interested in knowing. And it'll have a, a, a fair speed in, in uh, even in solid rock. We can drill something like maybe 35, 40 feet an hour in hard rock. Mm. And uh, so it utilizes a, uh, Detroit diesel, and and it's fully, uh, you know, uh, hydraulically controlled. Uh, it's, uh, and you know, I'm getting done. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm in just going to ask you some questions. Be the best thing you can yeah, do. Yeah, I'm. Look, you do it very well. I, yeah. I really don't know what yeah, <laughs> what yeah, subject you'd like to get over. How, how do you yeah. transport well, you the thing? Uh huh. From one location to the other. Well, it's motorized. It's, uh, we, we have a uh, transportation motor. It's, it's actually a train oh, carrier. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's a it's a, it's a, 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 a train uh, a train carrier of a quick and, and it's really mounted on that, and, oh, and we and just drive it down the road like any ordinary truck. Mm. And then assembly it after you get there. Uh. Then put it assembly it after you get. The site where you're going, right? Well, you and don't have location. It. The only thing you need to do is just raise your, your mast. And, then and that you thing goes just raise up your mast. And it goes up like that. drilling position right now, and that's a pipe rack. Uh huh. That, that, that so you actually amazing. lower it. Pipe rack that carries 125 feet. Oh. Uh huh. Now, Mr. Brown, mm -hmm. how can we miniaturize, for the sake of a better word, and put and make portable? A pump that I could use in Africa for drilling for drilling water. Well, there's various types of methods being used now, and and uh, 
very in, in different low, you know, different locations, localities. Mm -hmm. In this particular area, we can only use yes the type drill that we are uh -huh. that we have here because mm -hmm. and for but for that reason, see, we have solid rock. Yes. Just below the surface of, of the soil of the surface here, just I say five feet below, and 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 we generally drill hard rock from there until we. Uh, get to a point where water will, will enter the borehole. And, and, and back in, it's, it's got to go through some form or crack or crevice, mm -hmm. see, before you can get water because this is known to be consolidated, I mean, it's a real solid stone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's a type of granite, see. Right. And, 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 and there's no uh, possible of, uh, like, you know, soil or, or anything that water can penetrate. Mm -hmm. It's got to go through cracks and crevices. Oh, okay. For that reason, it's uncertain as to how deep we'll go. But mm -hmm. now, to make a long story <laughs> short, uh, there are other places where you can use a, a rotor-type drill or auger. Mm -hmm. So, my question, Mr. Brown, mm -hmm. would you say that if you were talking about a, an area in Africa, it would be wise to find out what the surface, what, what the, types of... Well, drilling conditions. What you have to drill what, through. Uh, well, depending on old burden, what you, what you have above your water. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And, oh, and so if, it's, if the rock is soft enough, you would not need... If soil, clay, dirt, and all those things, you only need mm. a road tool with cutting uh, ability, something like teeth on it, you know, uh, just rip at it and, and, mm -hmm. and, and dislodge and, and, and go down and, and you can either use water for clearing the hole or you can use air pressure. Professor Brown, mm -hmm. will, will you be willing to assist me once I give you all of the specification information you need in building a drill that would be appropriate for use in the area of Africa in which I am living. I feel sure if you can get me that information concerning the drilling conditions that we can should expect. I'm feel sure I could give you something that would maybe suit your you know your purpose. Thank you. I would like to make mention that Mr. Brown is one of the many technical, intellectual, and doing Africans among us here that you hear very little about and who creates and designs machines and other things that are quite useful in day-to-day -day society but are represented as European inventions and concepts and ideas. Um, Mr. Brown, could you introduce the audience, the viewers, at the first machine that you had built, that portable machine you showed us uh, for drilling for water, mm -hmm. the one that's over there in the back. Can you show us that, please? Well, that's the 2H machine, which uh, utilizes, rather than auger or air, the only difference is we, we use abrasive and, and, and jet and water. We, we pump water in and, and to, to, to clear the hole by using or utilizing the high pressure water pump. Not such high, but I'd say just enough to wash the whole out. Oh, so let me raise this question also, which is very important I've been thinking about since I have first met you. Uh, when I raise the money to purchase you an airline ticket, would you be willing to visit Africa for at least a minimum of three weeks and stay in my home and be given a tour and assist in the development. Uh, I, I truly attempt an uh, uh, offer, but now uh, uh, it, it would be hard for me at this point to foretell or predict what the situation would be at the time. But if it's favorable. If it's favorable. If it's at all possible. Well, yes. I will okay. try my best to cooperate and, 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 and uh, comply with your needs. Thank you. Uh, if I can help you, I'd be glad to do it. But now, but like I'm saying, the thing at this time is a little unsafe. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and particularly Sorry, my health. See. Uh, and for that reason, I, I would give you uh, a certain, uh, well, a, 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 a good, you know, uh, yeah. promise on that. I, I couldn't just give you 100% yes on it. 
Okay, Mr. Brown, thank you for this interview. It's truly been appreciated by myself and also by my guest host, Brother Wally. And also now we also have a visitor down here, the special guest, Brother Abdullahi from North Carolina. And we have all come to see you today to get all this critical information and knowing that the assistance is available. Thank you very much. You're live on a rise and shine. You get that now? Okay. Okay, this is the highway 324 that leads off the landing lane. problem to blacks at home. So the land is here, uh, they're not. And uh, this, this is a job for us to start to reacquaint our people with the earth and to show that of all the products and everything that we can use come from the earth and return to start to produce for ourselves what we depend on your people. country to the city and what kind of effect that it has had on blacks here in in the United States and in Africa? Oh, I feel that it has had a, a, a devastating effect uh, on blacks in both places. Uh, let's just take the blacks that have migrated from this area that you see now. If we pass by, if you go back uh, 30 years, uh, blacks were still living here. Some of them may not have been farming their own farms per se, but there were many who were. And in moving into the city, and it has had a devastating effect. It has had a social effect. It has affected uh, our family structure, the so-called inner city life, and 